It's where students discuss their views. It's Cat Chat, brought to you by Northwest Student Media. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here on Cat Chat, the show where students discuss their views and opinions on today's topics. We're broadcasting live here on the second floor of the Student Union and coming through your speakers live on KZLX. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here on Cat Chat, the show where students discuss their views and opinions on today's topics. We're broadcasting live here on the second floor of the Student Union and coming through your speakers live on KZLX. You can catch Cat Chat on KNWT Channel 8 Monday through Thursday at 6.30 p.m. I'm your host, Joe Cornejo, and with me today, we have three new panelists. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves real quick? All right, my name is Vontre Ritchie. I'm Brian Williams. And I'm Aaron Wilkins. All right, it's a pleasure to have you guys on the show. Thank you for joining us. Let's get started right away. All right, so we're going to talk about first topic, what everybody's been talking about the last couple of weeks, or last week, I should say, is the Muslim ban that the president recently implemented last Saturday, or, you know, temporarily put a halt on it. And everybody's had to talk about it. And recently, President Kaczynski released an email discussing about the, the new law. And he pretty much said that Northwest, while we understand the national security safety is a huge importance, but Northwest is a safe haven for diversity. And we're continuing to do that. And not ignore the contributions that students from abroad in those seven Muslim-based countries bring to the table, and we're going to continue to support them despite what the president and administration recently did. So, what are your guys' thoughts on the president's statement? Do you stand by what he said? I stand by. I feel like, in I feel like in this country of America, it's not just like strictly a sole race. Like mm. you have a diverse group of different uh, ethnicities and nationalities, and it's like it's what it's what makes up. The, the whole concoction of, of America. Like, yeah. If you, uh, if you, I feel like the Muslim bans like is a isn't a good idea for right now, like at all, because you gotta think about it, like we're still like using resources now, and, and the dollar is strong, so for us, so it's it's really gonna make the, the market bad, and mm -hmm. it's gonna hinder us a little bit. I feel. Like. Mm -hmm. uh, when I think about it, basically from a Northwest standpoint, um, it really. It really puts us back because it gives the international students like another life on America, and I just feel like it should be a safe Northwest should be a safe haven for the international students that are Muslim to uh, to have a voice, you know, and feel welcome. Yeah, definitely to feel welcome. Uh, we keep talking about Northwest as like a safe haven, and also too like the United States for like because it's also banning like refugees and people from those countries. And so the United States is supposed to be a safe haven for those individuals, and so far it's not. Like, we're, like, as a college, of course, we're diverse. Like, we, we have plenty of people from different countries, and then also the United States is supposed to be, but obviously, like, it's, it, we're going back to racism. Like, every, it's, and then it's more than just, like, blacks versus whites. It's, like, basically just us against everyone, and we should just be in a country where everyone feels equal or everyone feels safe, but now it's just, like... It's confusing and it's kind of scary. And America is built off the, you know, the basis that you know everybody's welcome, everybody can be feel at home here and not feel like they're being judged for who they are. You know, that's, that's what the Lady Liberty was built. Mm -hmm. If refugees come on the boat, that's the first thing they saw was Statue of Liberty, symbolized freedom. So, do you guys think this is the route we should go as a country to for our national security sake? No, I just feel like uh, there's plenty of other alternatives. Like you have the United Nations and stuff like that. Like if you really want to engage in peace. You, you, you gotta start with you. So, in other words, you gotta start within the country. So, you gotta start within the country first. And you gotta handle domestic problems as, as well as foreign problems. And if the foreign problems seem, seem to outweigh the, the domestic problems, then you just gotta band together. Mm -hmm. you gotta band together. Well, I feel like I feel like it's uh, more of a uh, like how can I put it? him like moving too fast, the president moving too fast and not really thinking about the repercussions that's mm -hmm. going to come behind him in the backlash and he's just going because he's the executive. Yeah. It's executive order so it's got to be done immediately. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really funny because I, I read these statistics that said that people, 
people that were like foreign, like the terrorist threats, it was like point zero 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 like three or something like that. Like people that were outside of the U.S. that did like had like terrorist threats, and so it kind of put a play on like um, like white people were individuals that cause like the most like threats or like terrorism and stuff which like I mean that's kind of like targeting but I mean if you kind of do your research and look at statistics and everything it's just like it's not it doesn't make any sense what Trump is doing. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like we're our biggest threat in the country right now and not people from outside of the country? Yeah. <laughs> we're like the only reason there's so much uproar is because of like because of Trump and like I, I, I think it's really awesome too though because like all the protests going on like from what I've seen they've been peaceful which is insane to me like it's I, I don't expect people to be crazy but I just respect that so much mm. and it definitely does have a huge impact because like you said they put a temporary halt on the ban because of the protests and the outrage from it so it definitely does have you know, the voice definitely does have an effect and the outcome and so what do you think is gonna happen from here where do we go from here because the ban's temporarily halted what's the next step we should take I don't know, but I feel like the next step it should be, that should be taken is a step to to ensure the I gotta say this ensure the prosperity of America in the future. I feel like if you do a, a lot of rational and short term decisions, mm -hmm. the long term effects could could really alter. Yeah. What could what what what, what the future might hold so far? It could be altered. Yeah, so just kind of bring this all together just so we all prosper together as one. Yeah, and definitely like analyzing the whole situation mm -hmm. before like we make certain moves because we got to see how it affects the whole world. Yeah. So I think analyzing the situation definitely does. In America, we are kind of all like, you know, the leader of the world kind of in a way. You know, we set the example, so this is the kind of example we're setting for other countries. Yeah. It's not looking so good on us right now. Right. But, you know, speaking of rash decision, when we come back, we'll talk more about Trump and his disdain for the media right here on Cat Chat. It's where students discuss their views. It's Cat Chat, brought to you by Northwest Student Media. And welcome back to Cat Chat here in the Student Union, second floor of the Student Union here hanging out with my three panelists. Now, last time, last break, we talked about Trump. We're gonna talk about Trump just a little bit more. Now, it's no secret that Trump has a very not friendly relationship, to put it nicely, with the media. He recently, you know, called some fake news. And yesterday at the Black History uh, Month press conference, he took more shots at the fake news organizations for the, the way they treat him. And I just want to ask you all, do you think this relationship between the media and the president is healthy for the long term, especially since so early on in the administration? No. I just feel like, <laughs> I just feel like the, uh, the personalities, like, with, 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 like, the media, like, the personality is, like, up or alive, we're here, like, on the scene, type mm. of personality, but, like, with Trump, it, it's more of a, it's kind of like a, it's like a mediocre, like, mediocre, like, job or something like that. I don't I'm trying to, the best way to put this. His perception towards the media dictates how he, dictates how he, uh, is basically perceived in yeah, the world. Yeah, mm. perceived the world, like, the things that he do towards the media really emulates how he really is, it's like, as a person? Yeah, mm -hmm. as a person. And I, I feel like if, if you're aggressive with the media, they, they're going to keep coming for you. So um, I don't knock him for it because, you know what I'm saying, he has to stand his ground. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, you have to know that the media is here to support. It can help you or it can hurt you. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, uh, he has to use it to his, his advantage, definitely. Mm -hmm. I like how you said, like, the media can both, like, hurt you and help you because... We've kind of been learning a little bit about like advertising and how it's kind of like um, I was talking to one of my friends and they're like it's really cool except you feel a little bit manipulated because like it's kind of reaching out to you personally in order to make you buy something and so I feel like that's kind of like with Trump in general I guess it's just like it's it's kind of surprising for that Trump supporters are like 
anyone in media that is a Trump supporter hasn't tried to like manipulate people into believing that Trump is a good person. And so I think it's also really funny because he's calling the media liars, but there's so much evidence to prove that he is one. And so he calls the media evil, but really like recently it's just showed like how much of a hero media can be. Mm -hmm. Like why why would you want to vote for someone? And even Trump supporters are like, "No, no, no, it's a lie." Are you are you kidding? Like we have all this history. Nope, it's a lie. Like that's Photoshop. This is just no. Like, and this kind of working relationship between the media and the president has never really happened in our time of history. And you yeah, know, every president it's never been a, so involved. Yeah, every president has the detract detractors in the media. So why does Trump feel like he should be any different of whether or not they get to say what they want to say about him? Because I feel like he has a he has a mentality of being superstitious. Like the the way he the way he carries himself, he could, he he walks as if he's like some magnificent person. You know? he's, He's this. He could be a bully at, at times. Like mm -hmm. he can say derogatory language on, on, on the in the public, and you have you have supporters and fans who support, who support that. Like I feel like he's a, he just feeds in off the the off the, the positive negative energy. Mm -hmm. He just focuses too much on the negative aspects of it. Mm -hmm. To get a positive light. Yeah. I really think like he uses his power to his advantage. So, uh, I don't know, like, I don't walk in that light, but at yeah. the same time, it's like, okay, you have to be courteous sometimes, you know? Yeah. You gotta act like, you, you You can't act like a superhuman all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. you got, you, everybody you gotta be able, has their slips and falls. You gotta be able to take criticism, you know? Especially yeah. when it comes to a position like that, where you're in high power, all this tension on you, people aren't gonna like you all the time. Right. And you gotta be able to deal with that and that criticism. Yeah. It's a little scary, I think, because since Trump is president, like he has a lot more power than he ever did before. And so it's like, if the media keeps bashing him, I feel like he's going to do something that just would just wreck everyone. But also, too, it could be another situation where like the media is so powerful and so many people are on their side right now that it might just take Trump down, like knock him down a peg. Mm. So he... I, it might be kind of a moment of realization, like maybe I should change and stop being a butthead. <laughs> he's definitely using it to his advantage. Yeah, he's definitely got some people on the side about the fake news. He's got people going against him, so it's kind of a weird line right now. Right. But you know, I'm always by the first Constitution, freedom of press. So you know, it comes with the job, it comes with our job. So you know, we'll see, definitely interested to see where it goes right. going in the future. Moving on, let's go to another topic that's kind of interesting for the future. Is it's recently announced by the governor of uh, Missouri that they're going to cut $67 million from the education. And Northwest is gonna be losing $2.2 .2 million in their budget also. So it's definitely affecting us right now. And it's, in the future, it's looking like we're gonna have a high, higher tuition rate. So hmm. what is that gonna do for the future of Northwest and just college in general? I feel like, I feel like well, the demographic in Missouri is, is, pre, is pretty much rural. So I feel like um, the education, if you, have, if you don't have education, you're stuck with uh, a career or a job that you've been accustomed to mm -hmm. most of your life. Like people come to college sometimes to find a different, uh, a different lifestyle, a different career, a different path to choose from. And I feel like if you cut costs from it, you're hindering what the possibilities that a person can learn. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're pretty much cutting their potential. Yeah, I look at it as motivation. Motivation to to come to school and definitely get things done. Because uh, if you waste time, you know what I'm saying, you can be wasting money also. Mm -hmm. So I think it, I, I look at it as motivation for me to go ahead and you know get my degree and um, start start planning and stuff for my future. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of it like that. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, it's it's good to be an optimist sometimes rather than a pessimist. But uh, I think that it could. All right, you said something about like raising tuition. Tuition already, honestly, like isn't really that bad compared to a lot of other schools. Um, like he's honestly, like he said, like motivation to get out of here, but also too, like it, I feel like it will motivate more people to like go for scholarships, maybe. Because I know a lot of people already, they're like, I can't pay for school. It's like so hard. My tuition's like this much money. Like my friend Amy said that, and I was like, Have you applied for scholarships? And she's like. Well, no. Like, there's. I think it'll make pe people more aware of like the opportunities outside of just like loans and financial aid. Like, kind of put yourself out there, apply for scholarships, and also like 
put your your work out there. Like I, I'm a video major. Mm. If there's some some scholarships where I could like give them my video and they could give me a scholarship, but they could also give me like a, a good reference. So. And, I think that's and cool. this election was interesting because you have people like Bernie Sanders advocating for free education, and now we have an administration that's cutting education. Do you think this is the right step to go in with regards to education? Do you think it should be more available? Uh, I feel like I feel like either way, you gotta think about it from this point. Like you gotta have you gotta have the motivation. You gotta you gotta want the intrinsic reward that's gonna that's gonna come to you when you're in college. If you, if, you search, if you search for the right intrinsic rewards, mm -hmm. you will get those extrinsic rewards. And then, you, know, you get your degree. You, you probably find a career or internship that you've been looking for. Like, you don't have to be confined in, in the state. You can't yeah. you know, Education could have been free, but it isn't. And it's, it, is, it is getting uh, cut due to budget costs. Like, you got to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I definitely say... Uh, Take advantage of free education also. So get your education while it's free because <laughs> at least it's, it's, still it's, cheap. The, it's the real deal when yeah. you get to college, you know. So I just want I just want people to take it more serious, you know, and come to college and know what you're gonna do and just complete it and accomplish it because you're paying for it. So sure, yeah, yeah. Give what you pay for. Yep. Uh, I feel like um I was just talking with Will kind of about this, and we were kind of talking about how, um, like, cutting cutting the budget makes it seem like, uh, well, we're gonna, for example, we're gonna have to start paying for things like textbooks. Like so far right now, it's like textbooks are included, and I looked at it, and it only costs like eighty five dollars. But then you're gonna have to start buying your own textbooks, which is ridiculous because, like, I only use a textbook in one of my classes. But if you'd be required to like pay for all of them, that'd be ridiculous. But yeah. Well, when we come back, we're sticking with Northwest. Talk a little bit of basketball, man. Undefeated. It's going up right here on Catch That. It's Cat Chat, brought to you by Northwest Student Media. And welcome back to Cat Chat. I am your host, Joe Cornell, here with my three panelists. And we're going to talk a little bit Northwest basketball now, man. Yes, sir. It's definitely going up right now. The Northwest Bearcat basketball team is 19-0, second best scoring defense in the league. Like, they're really putting on right now. Yeah, man. man. I mean, this is definitely a start of a dynasty. Mm -hmm. Like, they're really taking it serious. And um, I chat with some of the guys from here and there. And... Um, they're really excited for the season, and um, they definitely going head first into the to the uh, championship. I can I can I can see them at the end. And this is we have the opportunity to be the first D two school to have an undefeated national championship football team and basketball team. Like, what does that say about our prospects and our future going forward as a as a university? I feel like it's establishing a dominant a, a certain dominance like over over the conference. If you a winning program, you know what I'm saying. What you gonna bring in? Good talent. The good talent one wants to win. Like, mm -hmm. You get good talent to produce good, uh, to good, good rewards, like the national championship or like a conference championship. Mm -hmm. And kids want to be a part of it. And everybody want to be a part of it. Everybody wants to be a winner, you know. Yep, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Northwest is definitely a spot to be a winner. Yep. So, did you guys see Northwest becoming this basketball powerhouse in the last couple seasons? Or? Definitely, yeah. definitely, because yeah. like the the seniors that we like we came in as freshmen. Like we, we hung out with the basketball team a lot and uh, the seniors they like they wanted the younger guys to, you know what I'm saying, practice hard so like y'all can make it farther than we are. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was basically a family oriented thing and and I think that helped them. So this has been a foundation they've been laying down for the last few years. Yes, definitely. So definitely now, a foundation. Paying off for them. and they're about to get a new coach next season, Rich Wright, is gonna be the new head coach for next season. Do you think anything's gonna change under him? Think they're still gonna be the same Bearcat team we have right now? Definitely. Uh with the football team, it's like uh nothing nothing really changed, just the head coach left and probably another coach left, but um they definitely a full goal. 
Uh, my roommate is actually a football player. There's nothing going to change. You know, they're still going to go with the the same uh, Bearcat football that we always know. Same Bearcat football, same game plan. Definitely. Another Bearcat first down. Yes. Another blowout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys think three P's on the horizon? He said what? Three, three P, P on the horizon. Three P. Three P. Definitely. Ooh. I mean, like definitely. you know, we we've been pretty dominant the last two years. Yes. Yeah. That happened. I mean, but we de we're definitely going to get everybody's best game, and um, we just got to take take it as another notch on the belt and just go with the flow. Keep going. Saying one thing that 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 intrigues me, like when I listen to like players on the football team, like you know, I ask them like, how you feeling about going in this week's game? They they. Pretty much give me like the overall same answer, you know. We're gonna we're gonna go out and execute. That's the game plan. We do what the coach tells us to do. So you guys know a few football players. What's their mentality? Because you know they they do dominate the majority of the games they play. They still they they kind of freelance when they go out there, or uh -huh. they they're in that zone. They're they definitely focus. humble about their situation, and uh, they just take every advantage to be champions. I I feel. So even though they know like you no, know, our talent level is probably above everybody else's. You know, they still take it very seriously every game. Definitely. Yep, humility. I feel like you need that because if, if you come in both still like big headed, you, you can really be hurt if you lose. Like, but they just go in with the mentality that you know we want to execute the best way we can, and we're just going to get a couple stops. Yeah, that's that's championship mentality right there. Definitely. Yeah. So, so it's a big weekend coming up. You guys got any big plans coming? Uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. That's what yeah. Super Bowl. Who y'all got in the Super Bowl? Uh, I got the Atlanta Falcons. Even though I know the Patriots might win, because every time they go to the Super Bowl, it's guaranteed. So I'm hoping that the Atlanta Falcons can pull through, so we can see a new Super Bowl champion. Mm -hmm. That'd be really nice. I just gotta say, third three points uh, a game. Falcons. Falcons? What about you, Aaron? Football. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I, I'm not really a big uh, watcher of football, but I know a lot of people usually get really hype about the um, the Super Bowl commercials, and so uh, uh, we've kind of been learning about that in my um, advertising class, and she made us watch some of the Super Bowl commercials, which I was really surprised that they aired before the Super Bowl, oddly enough, uh -huh. but um, there was one that was a, a Febreze commercial. And it said, I love you halftime bathroom break, but sometimes you stink. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny because, I mean, it's halftime. Some people like Lady Gaga and other people really have to use the bathroom. So I thought that was something that really funny and people could relate to. Something that was also kind of funny is that uh, somebody started a petition to have Migos replace Lady Gaga at the halftime performance. What? Yeah, yeah it's like the petition. They doing yeah. it for the culture. Right, man, it's all for the culture, man. So what do you think about that Migos performing at halftime? I don't even know so who that is. Bad uh. bougie? <laughs> what? Migos performing at the halftime show, that, <laughs> that would definitely bring a different crowd. Yes. And uh, it, it'll, it'll bring fun, you know what I'm saying? Especially because the football players, that'll get them motivated because they like the songs, you know what I'm saying? Get you like, up. Hey, Atlantic Falcons are in there. Yeah, yeah, and then the Falcons, that'll definitely be, yeah, that'd be tough. Yeah, that'll like, be tough. I don't think the Super Bowl's had a uh, hip hop performance since the uh, Nelly, Justin Timberlake, right. Jan Jackson yeah. Super Bowl. But you think, you think Migos would be the, like the nice bridge right there? Definitely. Yeah, I feel like it'd be a, a bit a breath of fresh air. I definitely agree <laughs> with that one, man. Migos is twenty five. Seventy five. Hey, no side. <laughs> <laughs> but so you guys, you both picked the Falcons. Yep. Yeah. Falcons. But you guys, you, I think you guys are under, underrated Tom Brady right now. I really don't like Tom Brady because I was a St. Louis Rams fan that is now gone, but mm -hmm. I feel Ooh. like they cheated us in the Super Bowl back in the day. So yeah, I, I really that. don't like the Patriots at all. Two thousand double check. <sighs> It was a hard one to swallow. Yeah, I remember that swallow. Super Bowl, man. I was with y'all now. I was a Rams fan. Yeah, yeah. Huh. But you know what? He said, well, man, you guys make your wishes this weekend. Let's we'll see, though. Yeah. Still Brady, still Belichick. Yep. Yeah. So, hey, you got to see what happens on Super Bowl Sunday. Dynamic yeah. duo. All right, y'all. Thank you guys for joining today here on Catch Chat. It was a good time. Hope you guys come back. And catch us next week, same time, same spot. We'll be right here on Catch Chat.